Hi, my name is Andrew Kabachnik. I'm a CPA and I'm also a licensed financial advisor. I help my clients with all of their small to medium business and individual tax needs. I also help plan for your future with life and disability insurance and retirement. I've been in accounting for 10 years, helping clients of all sizes navigate the difficult climates that we're in regarding their taxes and financial well-being. The, the whole independent contractor versus employee situation has gained a lot of traction over the last five to ten years, maybe. Really five, I would say, where the Department of Labor is really cracking down. The states are cracking down. People aren't properly paying in the uh, unemployment insurance, Social Security, Medicare taxes. It's really become a problem. If somebody even simply claims unemployment, you could end up owing thousands of dollars. You should really always be leaning towards having them as an employee. You can't be setting their hours. You can't really be buying their equipment for them or their computer. You might want to really strongly consider having them as, a, as a, uh, an employee instead. Somebody that's definitely a contractor would be somebody who has their own business insurance. Uh, maybe they have a website and, and or their own business cards. They buy their own equipment. For example, if, if it was an accountant working for me, maybe they would have their own computer that they use, their own office possibly, but not necessarily. They set their own hours. It could be, it could be a set schedule, but it's a set schedule as opposed to requiring them to be in nine to five, let's say. It's a schedule you agree upon, more or less, that, that fits both of your schedules and not necessarily just the employer's mm -hmm. schedule. As opposed to an employee is somebody who has a set schedule set by the employer, a set work routine. You buy all of their computers, their video equipment, their uh, whatever the case might be. They fall under your insurance. They don't have their own website. And honestly, I, I had a client that dealt with this maybe two or three years ago where they said everybody was an independent contractor. They classified everybody as a contractor when that wasn't true. Most of the people were employees. And so somebody got laid off, went to uh, claim unemployment, and all of a sudden, He's part of a two or three year Department of Labor audit that he's going to have to pay fines and penalties and uh, back unemployment taxes and payroll taxes. And even more than that, it's a headache for him to get through all of this only because he wanted to try to save a few bucks and would hope he didn't get caught. Unfortunately, he did. And it's bound to happen at some point. And the longer you wait, the more of a headache it becomes for, for you, really, and the more expensive it becomes. So really, if you have somebody misclassified and it comes back to, to an audit from the Department of Labor or uh, the state or federal government, you're, you're definitely gonna have to pay back taxes. There's definitely back taxes involved. You'll have to get an accountant or a tax attorney, uh, so you'll be paying a, a bundle of fees there to help you deal with that. Or if you try to do it yourself, you could sign things that are incorrect or, or, or something along those lines. And almost definitely you'll be paying some sort of penalties and interest that can easily double or triple your, your bill. And the client I spoke about already, they ended up owing thousands and thousands of dollars just in interest and penalties because it was a, a few years of time that lapsed when they were making that, that mistake. And they didn't want to listen to us. They, they wanted nothing to do. They said, we'll try to save some money and if we get caught, we get caught. And in that case, it, it's even hard to justify uh, abating any of the interest and penalties because they willingly knew what they were doing. It's really not a good situation trying to misclassify people. There's a list of 20 questions you could find online, and that's where actually some of the gray area comes about, where it's 20 questions to answer to kind of determine if somebody 
is a contractor versus an employee. And you don't have to hit all 20 to go one way or the other. It's not all or nothing. But the, the more you can answer positively, the more likely they're an independent contractor. And it's just sort of a sort of a guide where if you answer a few, are they are they an independent contractor? And it really depends on the questions you're answering positively versus negatively. Uh, some might hold more weight than others. So if you want to correct the situation, what I would do is first and foremost work on getting everything that's currently happening done correctly. Have everybody fill out their employment forms, the W-4s, the I-9s. Start working with your accountant or your payroll company to uh, set up everybody as employees. Have the proper taxes withheld and sent to the government every quarter. And honestly, you might want to consider going back and uh, properly doing everything for the previous years. And I say that because that might help you justify getting interest and penalties lowered. If they were to come back and audit you and you have to deal with it that way, it could create more problems than it's worth trying to save for the past years. Of course, going forward, you fix it, but going back, you might want to consider amending previous years and it creates its own headaches because people might need to refile. So you really have to kind of weigh your options there and speak with your professional accountant and determine what the best method is for you to get current with your payroll taxes and properly classifying your employees and contractors. If you have any questions regarding your accounting or tax needs, I can be reached at 973-879-9111 or A-K-A-B-A-T-C-H-N-I-C-K at gmail.com. I'm conveniently located with offices in North and Central New Jersey, Westchester County, and New York City.